what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video we're going to be finally painting the engine bay now if you guys didn't see the last couple videos i'll catch you guys up to speed on what's going on so far we're going to be doing a wire tuck on this so the harness instead of it being inside the engine bay it's going to be outside of the engine bay to give it that more simple and clean look in here um, and then we also shaved the bay so obviously there's still a few holes like that one which is a ground and there's holes up there which are grounds but for the most part the holes that are here are needed um, all the holes that were in here that were all up against here that were up on the radiator support have now all been welded in oh now everything is smooth and the engine bay is all nice and shaved now so we just got some primer on here uh, that way we have a nice solid base for our paint to go on i had to use self etching primer in a couple spots where we had to grind down bare metal and I didn't want some dark spots, so I decided to just do the whole thing in gray primer. So real quick, before I start with anything, I'm just going to sand down the primer. I think I'm going to use maybe like a 400 grit, just a real fine, um, it's, it's kind of a medium, I should say. Sand down all the primer that you see in here, blow it all off with some compressed air, and then hit it with some acetone, and then start to mask off everything. And I'm also going to be putting a tarp underneath the truck, so I'm going to jack up the truck, put a tarp underneath, cover up the wheels, cover up much as I can that way I don't get any overspray on any of this stuff the window doesn't really matter I already got overspray on that plus that's gonna get replaced that's not a big deal but I wouldn't want to really get overspray everywhere but I mean the whole truck is gonna get repainted so it doesn't really matter honestly very excited for this build as you guys can see we have a lot of goodies all for this truck so we got a nice Weber 38 I'm gonna be installing uh, I got a set of headers that are on the way but they're on back order so I don't really know what I'm gonna get those but Got all these parts right here. I got the motor over here waiting on a couple of parts that are actually getting polished right now um, and chromed. So I gotta wait for those to arrive so I can assemble this. But uh, I figured while I wait for those parts to arrive and I can assemble this, I can go ahead and paint the engine bay of the truck. Since it's gonna be raining pretty much the whole week, uh, I have about two days to paint this. Just got done hitting the engine bay with 400. Now I did clean it with some acetone, but right before I start to spray anything on, I'm gonna clean it one more time with acetone. But you can see everything is covered. These are the tarps that I used to paint this truck. I put them all underneath. And obviously I got the wheels taped up. I don't wanna paint my ST wheels. Um, I got some old tarps on the ground to hopefully try to eliminate overspray. I also just got done emptying out all the moisture out of my compressor. It's open, should probably close that. Say that a couple times, got a little bit of rusty water out, but I like to do that once a week, maybe you know, once every two weeks if I forget. Um, but you all want to make sure that you get as much moisture as you can out of your tank because compressed air, you naturally just get condensation, and obviously that is moisture, and moisture is water. So you don't want water in your tank, one, because it rusts from the inside out, and two, because you get moisture in your line, which then comes out on your paint job. However, I'm gonna be showing you guys the whole setup that I use. Obviously, not the best, I'm not a professional. This is only my second time painting, but I'm going to show you guys what I do know. Just so you guys know, you don't need any special, you know, equipment or anything like that. This is a Harbor Freight uh, compressor that I got for about 50 bucks from Harbor Freight. Like I said, I got it secondhand, so I guess someone bought it, didn't like it, whatever, and returned it. And I bought it for 50 bucks, and it turned out like it, it works. I use it for everything. Um, so it's 125 PSI, which is kind of decent for what I need. And it's a 21 gallon, which is not bad. You can paint with a smaller tank, but I wouldn't recommend painting with like a two gallon or a five gallon tank. I'd recommend maybe like a 15 gallon or, or bigger if you can get your hands on one. Uh, but if you can't, then you know, whatever you got, just work with that. As far as guns, I'm going to be using the cheapest Harbor Freight guns that they have. I believe these are like $15. Um, and like I said, I'm not a professional, so I don't want to buy a $300 gun if I'm only gonna be painting once. Now. This is my second time painting, so I probably should have upgraded, but I already kind of know how to use this gun and I'm familiar with it, so I'm just going to use it for this time. 
Um, maybe when I actually paint the truck, maybe I'll get a better gun. But the way I think of these guns is they're disposable. They're $15 and they're $15 for a reason. They work good, but in my opinion, you only work for one time. So this one, I used it to spray single stage paint on that yellow truck. And when you take it apart, the tip, ah, I don't got to show you guys, but the tip inside is all rusty. Everything inside is rusty. So it's not a bad gun. It's just the materials that they use are kind of cheap. So these guns don't really last. But once again, it's a $15 gun. So in my opinion, they're just disposable. You use it once, you throw it away. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using one for the base coat, which is the color. And I'm going to be using another one for the clear coat. Um, so, so I'm, I'm just going to be painting the engine bay today. I'm going to be using two guns just for the engine bay and then throw these two away. And then when I actually paint the truck, then I'll buy two more guns, do the same thing. One for the base coat, one for the clear coat. I also have an adjustable air pressure regulator right here. It's kind of hard to see since I got acetone on there and it kind of messed up the plastic. But got an adjustable one on there. I believe I picked that up at Home Depot. And I also got a moisture water separator. You can see, got this also at Home Depot. I think these two in total were about 30 bucks. Um, I know a lot of people use the Harbor Freight filters that they have, the little red ones, but to be honest, they kind of suck. After about, I want to say maybe two minutes of spraying, you start to get moisture out of the gun because they're just not really that good. Whereas this one, I sprayed pretty much the whole paint job without getting any moisture. Um, and then towards the end of the paint job, I started noticing a little bit of water coming out. So then I had to take it off and kind of tap it and let the water evaporate. But this will last probably the whole engine bay job. Now, as far as paint, I got a one of one color. So I wanted to get something special for this truck since I didn't want it to be kind of a basic build. I wanted it to be, you know, something special in case I ever sell it or just, you know, kind of to have a special paint job. It's a one of one. So I walked in uh, with my guys over at OEM. They do uh, all the automotive paint you can think of. Um, so that's the name is OEM. They have their own paint. They're, um, they're the ones that I went to buy the paint for this truck. I just got single stage paint. So I'll show you guys real quick. For those of you who don't know, I painted this truck with $130 paint. I chose single stage just because I didn't want to deal with mixing clear coat and base coat and, and doing all that. Um, so I just used the cheap single stage paint that they offer. Now it's super, super dirty as you can see. I haven't washed this truck in, in a good while, but you can see it still shines for a $130 paint job. It's not bad, not bad at all. And obviously I chose yellow to stand out, but they have black, they have a bunch of basic colors, and they also have some metallic colors and single stage. Now I walked in, I told them what I wanted. I wanted a really dark blue that was almost like a, a black, but in the light it looks blue with a lot of metallic. And they whipped me up this. They even let me mix my own paint in there, which is actually pretty cool. So. Kind of sucks in case I ever crash the truck or do something. I can't get this exact paint unless they try to kind of make it, take a sample off and then try to make it exactly, which is not going to be exactly, but it's not going to be exact if I ever want to redo it. But it's cool because it's one of one. And like I said, I got to mix my paint. I grabbed the, the blue, poured it in. I grabbed some black, poured it in. So that was a pretty cool experience, the way they taught me how, how different colors and all that make the tone that you want oh super cool guys they let me mix up my own paint which i thought was pretty sick but uh this is the paint it's a two stage so it's going to be obviously the base coat and the clear coat over here we're going to mix it one to one with our measuring cups over here so one to one one part paint one part reducer and then for the clear we're going to do uh, four parts of the clear coat and one part of the activator you always want to make sure that you use these little filters that they provide. So this goes when you mix your paint up, you put this on the gun over here, and then you pull your gun and you want to obviously don't want to get any little debris inside the gun and get it all jammed up, especially if you're using a fancy $300 paint gun. A little trick that I like to do um, is I like to put acetone in here before I put the paint. That way I can see how the spray pattern is looking and everything. Uh, so I think I'm going to start off at about 40 psi so right now the gun is actually i think it's receiving from what i can see uh 120 psi to the gun uh, but the regulator when you actually hold it down it drops down to 40 so i'm going to start off at 40 psi right now um, and then go from there whether i need more or less 
I think I'm just going to play with it. I don't really know, like I said, too much, so I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. Uh, but I'm just going to tell you guys kind of what I'm doing. So 40 PSI, I'm going to start off with that. Start off at 6 inch um, span of height at 6 inches away from the workpiece. And then uh, we'll see what happens. So look at how much metal flake there is. Focus. Hard to see right now because it's all at the bottom, but Oh my gosh, you guys have no idea how freaking happy I am right now. Now, like I mentioned, guys, I am not a professional. I'm not too sure what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm having some sort of chemical reaction here, I think. Uh, I don't know if maybe there was some acetone on there and I screwed it on there, which I doubt would cause that effect. Uh, but having that and a little bit right here. But I'm just being open with you guys and letting you know what I'm dealing with. But uh, other than that, it's, it's coming out pretty good. I, I really can't even express like how perfect this color is for me. Like I know some people are gonna see it and be like, that's just a blue. And yes, it's a blue, but it, it's just, it's literally what I wanted. And that's what's crazy is because I had this color in my mind. I was like, I want it to be blue, but I also want a hint of green, but I also want it to be dark. And I was like, I don't know what color that is or what factory color, what factory car has that color from factory so I could just steal the paint code. So I was just kind of like trying to figure it out. and. Man, that freaking paint job, they nailed it. They, they got exactly what I want, what I wanted. I'm just speechless. I, I'm just, this color is, is insane. It's not like super wild and super flashy, but it, it's just, it's perfect. It's literally perfect. I just hope I don't ruin this paint job. Uh, but if I do, who cares? I'll figure something else out. Maybe change it and paint a different color. But so far, so good. Just hope that when we get to the clear, I don't screw it up. Hopefully. Just got finished with about three coats of paint. So now I'm just gonna quickly mix up some clear and spray the clear over. bummed that I finished so late now it's dark and I you guys can't really see uh, so I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow to show you guys but uh, I guess I could just put the light on there I'm honestly in love with the color it's it's literally perfect for what I was looking for. So here it is. This is uh, in the daylight. You can see what it looks like. Now, like I said, this is literally the perfect color in my opinion because in the daylight it looks like a dark blue, kind of like a navy blue. But at night, it looks black, which is literally what I wanted. I wanted the truck at night. When you see it, I wanted it to look black like the windows. And then when a little bit of light hits it, you're like, okay, that's not black. That's blue. And honestly, I think this is, this is the perfect color. If you guys have any tips for me or anyone else watching this video, I would definitely recommend that you guys put them down in the comment section down below. That way I can learn off of them and everyone watching this can learn off of it as well. One thing I forgot to mention is with the paint, I think I spent about... Four, I don't know if it was three or four hundred dollars 
uh, with everything. Paint, clear, hardener, activator, reducer, all of that. Uh, so it honestly is not that bad. So I know a lot of people take their shops, take the trucks to shops to get them painted and they end up spending like three, four grand to get a paint job, which is fine, I guess, because you do get a really, a, you know, a really good level of, of paint. But honestly, it's not fun at all to pay someone to do your work. So that's why I, I would highly recommend that you guys go check out your local paint shop, go to them, see what they recommend, and get a gallon of paint and, you know, paint your own truck. If you screw it up, who cares? It's max $500, max. And that's like getting nice paint. Um, so, yes, obviously you don't want to throw your money away, but also spend 500 bucks and learn how to paint your own truck and say that you painted your own truck. I'm just telling you guys right now, there is no better feeling than building your own trucks. And that means painting your own trucks, swapping your own motor in, doing your own work on your truck. It's hard, especially when you're learning. But honestly, I think that's the best part is, is learning is fun. And at least in my opinion, it is. Um, so, yes, it is challenging at times because you don't know what you're doing. Sometimes you screw up stuff and sometimes you end up losing money trying to save money. But at the end of the day, if you can figure out how to paint your truck, whenever you scratch it while you're out there bed dancing and you scratch up your bed or you dent in your bed, you painted it. So you know how to come back and fix that and repaint it again rather than have to pay someone another extra thousand bucks just to paint a bedside and paint match it when you could do it all yourself, especially if you have extra paint at home. So I really do encourage you guys to paint your own trucks. Maybe not the whole truck. Maybe try like an engine bay like this. You could even do it with your engine is inside the truck. Just cover up the engine bay with some tarps. Cover up the engine with some tarps like I did and just paint around it. It's as simple as that. But if you guys have any questions on anything related to the trucks or anything at all, definitely message me on Instagram, which is where I'm mostly active. And like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out, guys.